Here we go. Ready? Oh, he's better than me. Yeah. All right, guys, well, check it out. That's what the door's gonna look like now that I have it all shaped out and I have the, um, the molded edge on it, okay? It looks awesome, doesn't it? Now, you can see the, how, like, the inside corners aren't tight. That's because the bearing wouldn't get deep inside there. So, what I need to do, I have the other door over here, I need to carve that stuff out of there, okay? Now, you see where I already have this, this door ready to go, and I have it um, clamped down to my bench. And what we did, we just made patterns, all right? See? There's a little pattern made. And now I just drew some lines. You see that? And what I need to do is just, you know, spend a lot of time taking this material out. There we go. And that's it. So that's the next step in these doors. But I think they look pretty good overall. So once I get set up and do one of them so I know what the heck I'm talking about, I'll turn it back on and show you guys what's up. Well, there is the corner. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Oh, sorry. Nice wood bum cakes. <laughs> I like it. Now you can see how it was rounded over there. See what I, was, what I started with right there? And this is what I ended up with. So I'm going to try to give you a quick little breakdown. It's kind of hard to do this with the camera angle the way that it is, so I'm just going to kind of leave it. So that's what I have to start out with, alright? I might as well do the whole thing. Break it down for you. Alright, the pattern goes on, okay? Door end. See, it says door end, door end. You line it up, you draw the line, okay? With a pencil. And then I went through my arsenal of carving chisels. D chisel. And I came across a 325. And this 325 is really close to the sweep that I'm looking for. So what I do is I just come in here and I stab cut it, all right? Like so. Be careful if you're tremendously strong like me that you don't mess it up. And then I come along with a sharp little chisel, okay? I seem to use my chisels upside down a lot. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this material up, okay? Just gotta go easy, cause you can get underneath this stuff really fast. I think I just got underneath the piece right there, I'm not too sure. So I just kinda come in, nice and easy. I know my hands are in the way, sorry. Okay, see what I'm doing here? So, this is it guys. I just keep creeping up on it until the fillet line is equal on the sides as it is in the center of the point that I'm trying to get to. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to get the location of this fillet. That's all I'm worried about right now is the thickness of this fillet. Fillet, yeah, fillet. All right. So after I do that, and I just kind of draw this a little bit, all right? Just so I have a little reference line. Okay. Now with this chisel, I just kind of come in. A little at a time. A little on both sides. Now to be honest with you, this is where it helps to be a lefty because I'm kind of ambidextrous. You know, you may you may be too, but it helps if you can do this with like, you know, your left hand and your right hand. I'm just I'm just going back and forth. See, left, right, left, right. I'm gonna take this material right out of this corner until I get it to a point. So it's following the radius and it's going to a point. I pick up another sweep from my arsenal of tools. I got like a number five eight, and that seems to fit inside this bottom pretty well. Actually, that one's a little I discarded that one. It's a number eight. That's right, number eight ten. Now I'm just going to come in, left to right, okay? A little at a time, all right? This stuff, guys, you just got to go a little at a time, all right? Now I take a back bent, okay? Number twenty five six back bent. And you see how it fits the shape of the side? Now I just want to kind of continue that right into the corner, being careful not to go past the the corner of the other side. Now once in a while I just flip the back bent over 
and I'll just clean out the corner a little bit. Because that big, like number 825, whatever it is, 810, has a high time getting in here to clean out the junk. I'm kind of going too fast, too. I'm trying to expeditiously remove the material so you guys don't get bored watching. And I have a lot of these corners to do, so hopefully I'll get pretty fast at it so it won't take forever. Now you can see that it's starting to come it's starting to come together pretty good, but I have a hard time getting the top right here out. That's kind of like the only tough, tough part of this whole thing. Seems like there's still too much material up in here. See how that corner is starting to come together now? There's a point in there. Man, that's just tough right in here. Like, this is the hardest part right in here. Oops. See how I just took a little chunk out? Now, I'm really being overly done on this inside corner because it, um, it gets carved. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of this is going to get covered up. Well, all of it is. But I still want to get it close. It's good practice. See, I'm just trying to break that corner a little bit. I'm going to have to dig, dig a little deeper. What do you think? Huh, fellas? Kind of a pain in the neck. I know. I got a lot of these to do. I got... What? Uh... Two, four, ah, four more, that's it. Four more on this door. That ain't bad. Take a couple hours. See, there's still too much material right in here. I hope this camera angle is getting this. I can't see it. So, now this is just little cleanup, little detail cleanup. And maybe you can see it on the camera, maybe you can't. But watch. Little sandpaper, it's still too heavy right there. So that's it, man. I think it looks pretty damn good. So we'll clean up a little sandpaper and we'll inspect it. Now that I have the doors all uh, scalloped out, cleaned up, ready to go, cut the fit, rechecked, made sure that these things fit on the case. You know, I took the case down, laid it on its back, now it's sitting here on the bench. So what I need to do, since I don't have um, the pattern for the carving yet and I don't exactly know where this thing's going to lap together you got to keep moving on this stuff, you know what I mean? So I ordered the hinges, got them, these are nice, huh? Sweet, huh? I like the little bale, the little ball, whatever it's called. So I got to set these. And there's only one way to set these, it's with a chisel, you know? So remember, keep your chisel nice and sharp, approach things correctly draw it on the right way and put them on. So, let me move the camera. Alright, here we are. Here's the edge of the case. Now, I've looked at a bunch of books and you know, there's real no set set position for this thing. You kind of put it here, there, wherever you think it's going to be best, you know. I kind of just go six inches to the center of the uh, center pin here. I mean, uh, hole. So, I'll go six inches and then I'll go six inches down from the top. Now, depending on the kind of hinge that you have, you have to be really careful because if if it's just a pin hinge like this one, see it's got a pin, you want to make sure that that pin is up. You don't want it down because obviously the pin's going to fall out, okay guys? So just double check, make sure that this thing's set the right way, okay? And I'm not going to set the center of the of the bale to the center of the uh, outside edge. I'm going to leave it out. You can leave it out a little further if you wanted to. That way when you open the door, the door immediately starts to draw back so you'll have more room in the center of your two doors. So this is basically it, okay? I just hold it up there. I'll set my marking gauge like I did with the other uh, hinges on the lid, okay? I'll set the marking gauge to here. I'll cut this line and I'll make sure I have that marking gauge set for the top and the bottom hinges. And then I'll just hold the hinge here and I'll cut it out. I'll mark it with the uh, knife and then I'll just cut them out. So, that's how you do it, everybody. And since you already saw me do the hinge on the um, writing service and the lid, you really don't need to see me doing this one. You know what I mean? I have four hinges to do. And then once I get that done, I'll be able to close them up and set the center of the doors. And then, you know, hopefully get that lap laid out and cut the lap and fit those. And 
I have some hardware coming in from England today, I hope, for the two big long locks that go up inside the doors and I can set those two locks and put that hardware on and uh, what other hardware? I got a bunch of little knobs to put on and blah 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 blah. At this stage of the game with this piece, you're kind of jumping around all over the place so don't get confused if you're watching a podcast and I'm going from like the lid to the doors to the writing surface to the pediment maybe or to the doors again or whatever. You just kind of, you know, this thing comes together kind of fast and you're all over the place but I'm excited about it. I'll be pumped to get these doors on today. I just had about six guys in here for like three hours. I got here at six this morning. Well, they weren't here for three hours. They were here for a good two hours. Al was here, Ronnie, Bobby, friggin' Phil. All these guys just yapping it up. Al was shopping in a bunch of old ass chisels that he's <laughs> he spent all that time shopping in them, right? And he just picks them up in his hand with all the like the uh, shop edges mashing it to each other, just swimming his truck. <laughs> so that's what my morning's been like so far. That's alright, but now I'm gonna get focused and get this thing done. So, I'll talk to you later, alright?